uh, the company called King's Bowl. It's uh, it's called King's Bowl. I actually get it from Samurai here in all between all and Corvallis. And then what I do with it after that is I myself uh, add cocoa flour, perlite. Worm castings. And then in the end, unfortunately, everybody's not here to see, but I get a bit of a lighter and fluffier um, mixture, which gives the roots more fiber to reach into because naturally they're trying to get into trunks and trees and make coconut. I mean, it's like organic matter. Normally, I also throw in organic matter, but I don't have one right now at home, so that's where I'm at. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. So nervous. It's the first time I've done this class. Uh, my farm is Rusty Fish Farm. Uh, it's in Albany, Oregon. Sorry, I started it officially in 2013. We specialize in house plants, cactus, and oddities. Uh, you can find me at the Farmer's Market in Corvallis here on Saturdays and in, at the Winter Indoor Market on Saturdays. I don't have a storefront yet. When I do, I'll let everybody know. I'll be able to so. I just want to let you know I do have a little bit of, a little bit of qualification. I uh, also started in uh, the grocery business in 1995. And so here we are now. The crazy plant lady is cool. Yay. <laughs> okay, um, so here's uh we're gonna jump into temperature and the temperature the reason I go from soil into temperature is because not only does your soil temperature matter, but your water temperature and your room temperature. Remember, all these guys hang out in tropical, nice, warm climate. So they prefer between about 62 to like 78. So if they can get hotter, make sure that they have more humidity. Uh, yes, humidity is very important. So as we go into humidity and watering, uh, I prefer a humidity about 50 degrees, 50 humidity. You can easily get a little thermometer that tells you the temperature and the humidity, biomars, uh, uh, tooth, uh, fan, here in town, or you have one. Um, a little dip stick in there will tell you also, I mean, if your nose gets dry, then you need more humidity around. But, okay, we're gonna go into I, Okay, so there's top watering, which is great, especially when everything's over dry. I own a nursery, so it's a little bit different for me. I tend to not let things get over dry. I kind of try to, because I'm trying to like foster everything or get everything going. But at home, you really need to let things dry out and pick up your plants. When you leave a typical uh, nursery or Home Depot, whatever, your plants can usually going to be either oversaturated or super dry. So, so pay attention to that. Give it a little poke. You'll understand how that is. Watering. Um, another thing about watering, my personal preference to water is to underwater. So I put everything in bowls or cooking trays is my favorite thing. Another thing is that you are, you know, had a serious plant issue like me. I went and got the big uh, plastic container that goes underneath a wash machine. You can get those at Home Depot malls. It's a, they're kind of flimsy, but you just be careful with them and then underwatering myself is best because then you can actually see it, pick it up, go in so much watering, you can leave it under, uh, you can go to bed, pick it up the next day, you're okay. Especially if you're on a time crunch. Plants 
normally like to water in the morning with the sun, but you have to remember they are also outdoor plants somewhere else. So make sure that we're, you know, just give time into them. If you water them at night, do not water the whole bush. You will cause rocks. You don't want to eat rocks. Uh, let's see. Um, oh. We're going to jump into fertilizing. Uh, when you go ahead and you, oh, watering, I'm sorry, I, I meant to touch, touch on this. I don't know where Kerbalis is yet. Uh, but watering, a lot of times, what you really want to do is go ahead and it's also thank you. Um, if you live in the city limits, taking water, if you don't have a way to collect rainwater, Set your water out at night or fill up your bathtub if you have a lot of plants and let that chlorine and uh, all those nasty chemicals lift off. Uh, let's see here. The prayer plant in particular does not like any chemicals or minerals or anything like that. I have a well and you can't see it, but guess what? There's a little bit brown around the leaves. It's okay. I do it too. And that's because I have too much minerals and I didn't I rushed and I didn't get the rainwater. So collect rainwater if you can, let it air out if you live in the city. Uh, oh, if you go on vacation, go to your bathtub, uh, plug it up, put a little bit of water in there, set everything in your bathtub. I only suggest it if you're going to be gone for 10 days or more. Uh, be conscious. Don't soak out something that you know is going to get soaked out. But it's going to create for ferns, tacos. Let's see. Your prayer plants, your monsteras can easily uh, last about 10 days or more without water. You can go up to three weeks even sometimes. So, yeah, about water and also when you get home, check it out because the, the big box stores, when they get their plants, they're typically getting them shipped if they're a house plant. They're getting them either from a local nursery, which bless their heart, but house plants are so popular now, they're having to rethink so quickly that make sure to leave it in their pots for about two to three months because they actually haven't even used the gut enough roots yet. They're having to force them out. As soon as they've got that first little noise coming up, which is awesome. Or not, sorry, little bee. Um, let's see. As we go. Oh, lighting. Welcome to Oregon. Um, as the local here, we all know that vitamin D is a, a little bit of a problem, not only for us, but for, for these four plants. If you live in a house that you have to turn on the light at eight o'clock in the morning to read a book, then um, it's too dark for a plant. You're gonna have to step to give a little extra light to it. I, uh, myself, like uh, just a smaller ball. This isn't any company that I, you know, I, mean, I can't really say it's better than one or not, but it's just an easy ball that goes into your normal size lamp, which you also need it, right? So I put these around my house because my house actually doesn't get a lot of light, only my sunroom does. So this is how I can have plants in my house. Uh, you can go ahead and get a big ball that you need and a nice light. And you go to look for it, uh, just personally, think about if you sit down, uh, do you want the pink light, the blue light, or the regular light? I, in my sunroom, also add extra light, and I have a six ball, six foot light in there. I personally like the white light, I, and I'm in the tropics. So you don't want to be in the tropics. And let's see, oh, okay, so, yeah, let's let's talk about low light, medium light, and bright light and direct light. Uh, low light, like I said, I'm just sorry. Um, uh, if you can read a book without uh, having to turn on a light, that's 
low light. When you get into medium light, that's what most plants like. That's when you're starting to get indirect light. They're kind of at the back of the room, but not in the shadows. That's what most plants like. That's your pothos, everybody's got to see them. But then you get into like bright, bright, bright light. That's when you're getting into your banana plants. You know, you have to look it up. But those are your really different ones. And it's interesting because you can make your own like situation. So I have a huge banana plant and I use it to, for undergrowth. Uh, another thing you can do is, this is our funny little pot here that we've just picked miscellaneous plants in. So you can use it as an undergrowth for seedlings and things like that to make different like So I even have a cactus in here my husband decided to throw in. I'm like, what? It's still living? No, that really shouldn't be. Um, hmm. Is there any questions? Sorry. Back to 
else can really tell when they cut holes. So you're gonna cut it back about that far, about that long. And then with the baby and this lovely jar, you're gonna to wanna to make it look pretty because we're in a, you know, we're in small living. So you can stick your cutting in that jar, and if you put a bunch of plants all together with like four or five jars, you will raise the humidity in your house. Again, if you wake up in the morning and your mouth is dry or your nose is dry, we need to raise the humidity. And another way to raise the humidity, which is awfully cute, is if you uh, take a tray, one of those nice trays you can get at Goodwill anywhere, put pebbles in it, and then put that with a, a water so your plants aren't sitting in the water, and then you set your plants in that water. That will also help. And then back to lighting and low lighting for your rooms and your bedrooms. That's always uh, everybody. That's one. That's a really big question at the market I get. Spider plants are really good. Oh, she's over there. The big one on the ground there. She's the thing we use. So. Spider plants are really good in your bedroom. They help with the oxygen. So are snake plants. They're low light as well in the bedroom. And oh, if you have a north bedroom, then I would recommend an owl. But if you don't have a north bedroom, I wouldn't put it in there due to feng shui because they just prefer the north. All right, are we ready to jump to uh, the bedroom? I think so. Like I said, really nervous. It's my first class. First class ever. So, just been doing this for years. Okay, so I don't know you guys, but I get kind of thrown off the fertilizer. It's kind of scary. You go in there and it's like, oh, this wall of fertilizer. Do I get low numbers? Do I get high numbers? Or three numbers? What does it all mean? Well, don't have to worry about it with house plants. Just get low numbers and all the symptoms. Easiest way to go. You like to put the little stick in? Have a good time. I prefer a liquid uh, fertilizer. And the reason is, is because it's really easy for me because I underwater again. And I take a gallon jug and I only put one little cap full and I actually water every other time with fertilizer. Because again, I'm a nursery. I would keep a big. But I will say, like these ones here, everything here that I brought is my personal plant. This isn't, okay, it might be fine. Just my personal plant. These aren't. So, any questions on fertilizer? Because I prefer to build a really good soil base before I have to worry about fertilizer. And when you get a plant from a nursery, typically they already put granulars, or like me, they, they're fertilizing regularly. So, if you forget to fertilize for a couple months, that's okay. But don't just remember, don't rush to move it out of that pot because plants are already in shock when they get to the big box store. They have this. Oh, good. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. I totally forgot about that. I actually, uh, from November to February, I uh, quit fertilizing. And uh, but here's the rule of thumb. If you see something that's growing, so here's this beautiful, of course, it's not blooming today, but this is what's called an ever, a Chinese evergreen. And she has been blooming all winter long. So I, I fertilize her because she's blooming, right? And you have your Christmas casket. It's blooming, fertilize it. So it's like a catch 22. As soon as I say don't fertilize it, it starts to grow. And you've got to 
fertilize it. A lot of the good luck plants also continue during far winter, which is really nice. Uh, the ZZ plant, another plant, started to you know, push off new growth, I mean, a month ago. So I gotta give it a little, a little drink, you know. I, think I look at them as toddlers. No toddler is the same. They all need just enough attention. Like, let them have their own. But, oh, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Any other questions on fertilizer? Yeah, wonderful. Yes, you're right. You're right. And like I said, to each their own. The granulars are a lot easier. I just find that the time release for me just never works out right. So like I was showing how this plant here is blooming in winter, but then other plants aren't. So I build my own soil and I can put those on the top, but then I forget. And I don't, for me, I, I don't forget to have flowers. And Oh, yes, yes. Uh, typically, if you're using granulars on a house plant or let's say your azalea, your rhododendron, that type of thing, a one pump. Read the, the box. Each of them is different. But I personally do once a month. Hanging pots, like those gorgeous hanging pots during the summer that you buy in Davis and all those, every three weeks. And it's like a huge scoop. And what it is, it's, it's got a, because they're not getting anything, they're sucking in so much from the sun that the, they'll just fertilize themselves for the majority. Basically, they're just helping the plants suck everything in. Yeah. Good question. So I water my plants when I pick them up and they're dry. Oh, if I can't pick them up, um, give them a little nudge. If they're dry. Uh, here's another thing. Some of my bigger plants, what I do is I, I, I take a wine bottle and I fill the wine bottle up, apple cider vinegar, and I tip it upside down in the plants. And that helps me. Uh, but still, take your finger. If it's a huge plant, like we're talking a big pot, you really want to get down there. If it's a small pot or a, a couple gallons, you want to get down to your first knuckle here and then and then walk. And then the smaller pots are like the four inch. These are really picked up. Now, let's see, do I have one doing it? Oh, left my example at home. She was looking back. So, if you get a plant that starts to curl its leaf and it looks like it's dry, you're like, oh, it's not dry, it's just it's wet. Don't water it again. It might actually be over water. So, just let it completely dry out and then get it watered. Here's the next thing. Oh, most, most common mistake is, oh my goodness, I let my plant get totally dry and it's dying. I'm going to water it and fertilize it and let it sit in water overnight. No, 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 no. You're drowning your plant in whatever type of fertilizer. Water plants really nicely, a couple times over, get that weight back, let it sit. Do like two waterings until I cut it fast, prune it, love it, then fertilize it. Because you have to wait until it's little quiet, the little teeny tiny class capillaries come back to life. That's what really pulls everything in. Here's the next thing it's okay to throw a plant to compost. It's so hard. 
Now you can also, like these little guys here, they don't look like it, but they are what you call uh, lucky bamboo, also known as ribbon plant, song of India. If you got some bad looking plants, group them together. You know, put them all in one pot. Then you only have to like maintain that, that one little area. And plants live together naturally. You don't just see like, oh, you know, monocrop, monstera. No, there's sapos mixed in with the monsteras. And we got lupa growing. So it's always not, and then and then you're hiding. You can hide it, you know. Like I'm hiding a lot here by gripping flag here. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. I I over water. Underwater. I have a question. Wonderful. What did you say you do with the vinegar? Oh, apple cider vinegar, yeah. So what I do with that is about um, every so often, I'll add just like two or three drops to the water. And I, the reason I do that is just for the, and I underwater, and I don't do much. Like to one gallon, I put 10 drops, like just droppers. And that's to help uh, with fungus on the roots. Okay, thank yeah. you. Like, no problem, not a lot. Really be very careful. Sparingly is better. Yeah. Let's see, well, let's go to pests. That's a great job, I love it. Okay, pests, pests. We have them, you have them. If you don't have them, you know somebody who has them. So the best thing, best way not to get pests is when you buy a plant. When you buy a plant, You're gonna to want to inspect it. This is a really easy one to look at. Make sure to go under the leaves all the way. If you forget your glasses in the car, take a picture of it and you can blow the picture up and make sure you don't have little critters because nobody wants hitchhikers. No. Then, next thing is. Look at the roots. Pop that plant out. Be shameless. Kind of go low. Check it out. Like I, you know, I know how old this plant is. And when I sell it, I say, don't take it out of the pot. That's why I tell everybody. And you can see it's not root bound. It doesn't need, you know, you can take it home. It can hang out. You can move it around the house. Figure out where it goes. Or you introduce it. All your other buddies. I take them into the shower. I close everything down nicely, and then I inspect it again because I forget my glasses. I forget my phone. So that that's really the best way. Some people use neem oil, and they wipe all their leaves down. I just wipe the leaves. And then do like a good three week quarantine for your new plants. Another thing I do, this is just a nice bottle. It has nothing to do, it, but it's diatomaceous. It, it's a small bottle and you put diatomaceous earth in it. You can get it at um, Wil Wilco, the feed store. They have a huge collection for amenities for houseplants. I was blown away. But I blow it and I put it on the base of the plant, the diatomaceous earth. So then if any critters do walk up, then, you know, we get pests. 
And the other thing I do, which is really easy, is these bottles. Okay. Okay. I'm not trying it over. I'm not pushing any company or any place. But Wilco is the only place I can find that's an all paint for Valentine's area. Not true. Actually, what I do is I um, also, because they are so big, they normally come in a huge piece. Oh, I think she was, did you ask us? I wasn't sure. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I hang them in my greenhouse and I put them every five to 10 feet in my greenhouse also while I get all my vegetable starts and all my other things going. But you, these are you, these are such an expensive way. I will say though, going organic is sometimes a little bit more expensive. So the pack is 20 bucks or something, but it lasts me a whole year for my house plants and for my greenhouse. That's different. We don't, you know, that's different class. Greenhouse. Uh, let's see. Uh, best way for pets is preventive. Oh, another thing is this. Fan, uh, an oscillating fan, you can think about it all summer long. They actually, plants love that. They get wind normally. So even on low, just blows everything. We need to crowd everybody in the winter in order to protect them and get the humidity going and keep them warm and make them love. But that's also when we introduce pests. So that's why a little oscillating fan is nice, even with the humidity. You don't have to have it on all the time. You can turn it on at night when you're in bed, and then you won't even notice. Let's see. Oh, uh, shower. Again, just like when I said buying a plant and bringing it home. Um, giving a plant a shower anytime that you think of the the pest is a really easy way to do it. Nobody likes to go through and have to look at every little leaf, but we, you know, we have to, but you don't have to have to. So. Well, oh, wiping down leaves regularly is another way. Like I said, you don't want to look for them. So we do. So what I do is we're going to simplify these. So we need water. Grab three plants every time and check its foliage and dust them. Then it won't feel overwhelming. And another thing is start from one side of the house, complete all the plants, start at this side watering, and go back to all the plants the other direction. You won't forget. Another uh, trick and I don't know. When I water my plants, I say love and light to them, and they're big. So I don't know if that's something. Somebody asked me one time when I was working, how are these plants so big? I said, I say love and light. Because you're supposed to count one, two, three in the industry, and they're all supposed to water from the bottom. You go to the third plant, and then you go back. And you go one, two, three again. So it's love and light is what I, I said in that verse. One, two, three in the industry. And you want them to soak out. All right. 30 plants. Woohoo! Okay. Sorry. Yeah, so if you're if you're like if you have three plants. 
you go one, two, three, and then you go back. You go one, two, three, and you do that three times. And then in the nursery business, your plant should be wetted up. And, and it should be watering from the bottom. Yeah, and then let it completely dry out. Uh, after you do that, let it dry out. Yep. Uh, so before you water it. Exactly. And you can usually tell pretty well. This is really dry. You really need to meet your plant, make friends with it, do you to get it home. Pick it up four or five, you know, move it around the house, and if you really know how it feels, and then you'll know how wet it needs to be. And also, if you move your plant around, then you will also notice pests with the time. Yeah, so you know, little fire, um, sometimes, oh, or, 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 or if, uh, your leaf starts to curl funny. You know, and like, oh, that could be, like I said, over water, under water, and I did not say, I'm sorry, it could be a pet also. So open up that leaf and see if there's like a little caterpillar. Uh, right now, spider mites are coming out really heavy. I don't suggest misting. I know that everybody wants to mist their plants and clean their plants that way. If you like have four or five plants and they've got a situation, take those four or five plants out of everybody, take care of the situation, and then bring them back. Especially if you have an applicant that masks, any type of misting will kill the plant. It just doesn't kill it. It just the leaves just want to get back. I didn't even bring it today because my kid can't have any holes. They're wearing so. So missing, no going out. One, two, three for three for big heavy pots. Back. Because what happens is you go in and like, oh, I'm, I got to rush. I got to water my plants. You use water and you run away. And first thing that happens is all the soil, usually because it's dry, as you notice, right? Oh, I am. That's what I noticed. All the soil comes off with the water. So that's, and then you gotta go back to water. You just barely got the top of the soil wet. And the soil can't soak in. Here's another thing if you have a whole plant, um, a skewer or a chopstick going around and soaking the soil in order to get that water back down. It, 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 you will actually get a plant that will grow completely. I don't have one. I left her at home. I rescued her, so I gave it to her, gave her to me. Um, the roots will actually grow the whole plant out of the top and there'll be no soil. So that's, you know, so we just Aerate it with a chopstick, correct. Jab it, water it. Uh, at that point, if it's really like a tight plant and you can barely get that, that stick in, go get a uh, screwdriver. I, that's one of my favorite tools is a screwdriver. And I use a screwdriver. And then get in there and then put that upside down wine bottle in there. So we can get that extra root water. If it's really that root down, you gotta, you gotta repot it. Yeah. Or if it's too big for your house, re gift. Just give it away. Too big for the house, gift it away. So pruning, um, it's wonderful. Here's another Ellen. Ellen needs to be pruned. When I do pruner, like I showed earlier, I'm going to cut her back for no 
white, and I'm going to leave this long repeat here. And the reason, reason is is because then she has support when she goes into the water. Want to prune her back because we have new growth right here. This new growth will be stimulated by pruning. You also will not notice. Sorry, Roxanne, because she's looking really good. I'm almost ready to put her out. So uh, I got her three weeks ago. She's already got new growth happening. Got new growth from here. She, I wish I took a picture. She looks bad. You know, everybody says, you know, Instagram, those people who show the pictures of their plants, they typically just got them delivered. Seriously. So you can order them from San Diego, get them all wrapped pretty, and they go, oh, look at this. Oh, look at my picture plant. It's okay. You don't have to have a picture perfect plant. Number one thing, we're not picture perfect, plants aren't either. So pretty much any plant likes to be pruned. Um, when you get to your prayer plant here, they like to be pruned, but when you prune them, you can't propagate them. You have to take, oh, there's the sun, first time here. So this little piece here can be propagated, right there. And the reason is, is she already threw a little bit away. Here we go. You just take her, kind of pull her. So there's a new little prayer plant that you can go ahead and fit. But now let's see, she's kind of stuck, right? Because I'm only doing one. That's when I stick it in to the fun pot. Your group living. This is the communal living pot. You want to propagate, you want to have, you don't have a lot of room, just put it all in one pot. It looks right. Remember, and you can hide, you can hide the dumplings. All about hiding. Pest control. Flying through this. I'm so excited. Find the plant. Oh, tools. Tools. Cheaper the better. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So this is my mom, over here. Right? Looks kind of mean. I just pruned it back. And the reason I pruned it back, the only reason I pruned it back, was because it was just too big for where it's living. And here's the, the start. And they actually live together and take up less room. So that's why I pruned that one. So that's one just good reason. Another reason they're hanging, they're touching your couch. Good time to prune it. Just put prune it all the way up to the point. Nobody will notice. No. Oh, 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 here, here's a good one. Okay. So she got damaged on the way here. And so I'll prune her on the way home. She got a little cut there. A lot of times spider plants here will uh, get uh, these ugly little tips. If you've got time, have a 
coffee, feeling good. Go ahead and turn those up. You, but you don't have to. Uh, that's the other thing. In the wild, oh, here's a very important one. And this is kind of like a point two class, a little bit harder class. This is a static fern. These are the male part of the fern. You don't pull it back, even though it looks ugly. You can just eat this to grow. It's the life force. Typically, people wear that. But see how this one get damaged? Yeah, I'll go ahead and cut that. But, but you leave this. And you want to treat that because, yeah, so you want to leave the hard, dry part here because it's the male part. And then this is the female part. But it has to have the male part dry. Otherwise, the new male here, new male will not uh, grow, grow up without the old. No, no problem. And you know, I appreciate your questions. You have respect. That's when we get through it. Yeah. Okay, so cheaper, it's a better tool. Like I said, uh, chopsticks are great. Don't leave them in there poking up with the best way. But if you hide it, it's okay. Uh, scissors, number one. Uh, oh, turkey baster. You never think about a turkey baster. But when your plant's sitting in water, you can easily just tuck it out without having to worry about it. Oh, the bottom, the bottom watering. I always have a tray constantly. I also always have a bin of soil mix that I like. And then I can add more or less from there. Oh, I don't have it. But I always have a wooden spoon because that seems to be like my good tool to dig in and transplant with. Uh, a lot of times, just good spoon from the kitchen is an amazing tool. Oh, and scissors. The little kid scissors. Are my favorite because then I can go in and just get like the really fine little areas. You need bigger snippers when you work with the monsteras and like you know bigger stuff. Glasses or magnifying glass. That is crucial because I I you, you have to see you have to look under you got to look through those little crazy little things those insects. So those are like watering cans. Any other questions about tools? Tools are pretty easy. I don't have anything fancy. There's all those new gadgets out there that tell you the pH or tell you the temperature. I really I don't do it. But yeah. So, good question. Situation. Not responding to the shower. Okay, so the question was is if uh, I can't get rid of the pest with just a shower and an easy wipe. I myself go use uh, a mixture of, and I don't have it right on hand because everybody gets, I buy that. Any mixture I buy at heavy, heavy dilute. But I use Dr. Bronner's peppermint. Old remedy, really old remedy. And then it's diatomaceous earth in the soil. That doesn't work. I, uh, I remove all the soil, rinse all the roots, give it new soil. That doesn't work. It's out. And I will be honest, scale is the worst. I, 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 if I did scale, um, I've been known to, you just sacrifice it. Sometimes you have to sacrifice to save the rest. So I don't have a good thing on scale other than it's horrible. Peppermint, pain, and uh, it's a, a little. You didn't do that, but you gotta be really careful about the leaves. <laughs> um, yeah. And sometimes pests come with the house. You 
don't even get to choose. Like, they're there when you move in. If that's the situation, I would be gone. And I would be gone that way that it's not more uh, of high rates for us to stop. Yeah. And I would, if it, yeah, I would do that. Yeah. That's a nice one. Um, I grew up here, so, yeah. Oh, powder mildew. <laughs> Let's talk about powder mildew. Has anybody had to deal with it? If you haven't, that's wonderful. You're doing everything right. You have to deal with powder mildew. I suggest you remove the plant immediately. Get rid of the soil. Rinse the roots. Rinse the plant. Quarantine it and pray for the best. Powder mildew will take over the rest of the the plant. Uh, oh, another best thing: we put our plants out in summer, and when we bring our plants in, we have to check that. But oh, we're getting our own little. I looked at the time. Let's talk about feng shui real quick before we forget. Oh, do you have any other questions, real quick? Anybody? Anybody? Awesome. I like to say that. But okay, feng shui. Uh, does everybody know about it a little bit? Okay, perfect. Not I uh, see you two beautiful people over there. All right, so it's the practice of making sure that everything is balanced with the elements in your home, your life, and uh, your surroundings. So there's a few lucky plants. We're going to start with the aloe plant because it's the only plant that we put in the north and it's a little funky you know everybody else goes the other direction there we go all right so the north you know the north south east west so aloe goes in the north, and the reason that it goes in the north is I believe it is, uh, worth of negativity and stress. So in feng shui, oh, feng shui comes from China. So when you think about geography in China, north is cold, desolate, you know, you need a lot of medicine when you come from the north. Aloe. There we go. Aloe. Only plant. Yes, for the north. Everything else is south and southeast. And the reason we do south and southeast is because that's where the sun comes up. We want that south, the temperance. Number one thing, do not put very tall plants south or southeast because that's blocking the flow. So, oh, here's my sweet plant. 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 This is actually my cute little plant. It's a uh, uh, polka dot type of planter. And the snake plant also goes to the south and southeast, and it brings you strength and prosperity. So, if you have a house and it doesn't get light, all but one room. Just view that one room as your whole house. So you don't have to worry about that. Just visualize that. Uh, oh, the Z plant here brings in, of course, more wealth. It's all about the money both with feng shui and plants. It's funny. Except for the palm. So this here represents uh, the look of money that used to be on coins in a tree. So that's why the Z plant is the money plant. Also, it uh, has uh, the way that it's tubular in the bottom, basically, the whole So those plants, you know, most, most, I don't know if I read the Z plant. I thought that line, but the aloe is on it. And then my newest body, my new plant, is the money tree. And the reason the money tree is lucky. Again, southeast is because when it grows it into five leaves, it represents the five elements of uh, feng shui. Beautiful plant. 
They also tie it in the five uh, tree trunks to represent the five elements growing together. So this is a great way in your house to bring all the elements together, both of everything in. So the best part is some of these plants we already have. I mean, we'll talk those, right? Pothos and it's a golden potho. And the reason they like the golden potho is because the bars of gold represent bars of money. So a lot of people will put money underneath the pot or actually plant money in the pot to bring more wealth. Oh, I know, it's so fun, huh? And then our cute little, little Jakes, little baby Jakes here. Again, money, wealth, prosperity, abundance. That's why you go to the restaurants and you see them in the front door. That's where you want to place the Jake, in the front door. That was the other thing. Oh, let's go back to the spider. Oh, I'm sorry, the snake plant. Snake plants also represent the the, uh, the uh, leg of a sword. So by placing it in the front of your house, you're going to cut any negativity coming into your house. It's cool. I can remember what you will guys. And then we have what I said earlier is good luck bamboo, also known as song of India, ribbon plant. Well, it's you, everybody else, you could have say that, those pretty ones. Same plant, younger, that's all. Again, you want to place this in your house. Uh, typically, a group of five, well, actually, a group of five represents all five elements and it brings in abundance and uh, balance to your house. And then my, one of my favorites, woo, evergreen, Chinese evergreen. Again, sell, sell these. Blooms in the winter. Lots for us Oregonians. More, and this one actually uh, helps harmonize the family. And I think that's it. I do went over. I'm so sorry. Thank you, everybody, for coming. If you have questions, let me know. I'm still here. I'm not going anywhere. But this lovely lady has been a continuous family. Terry, any questions? Yay. Oh yeah, I have a problem with that. Oh yes, yeah, eaters, yeah. So uh, they blow up on the plants and they dry them out. So we have to pay attention to check that. Uh, move some plants away. Anything that brings money and wealth into your house, you don't want that hot air blown off for feng shui. Thank you. Yes. Something I've had for years is get it to me way too organized. I uh, also use wine bottles to put it on. I cup water, but I make sure that it gets burnt. And uh, all you do with that is pick it up, and you know, if you got water, pour it out, pour the water out, you're good to go. Oh, the other thing is uh, the rock layer when you don't have pot when you repot. Not really good. In the end, the soil just goes right into the rock. It's great to protect the little hole so you're not, you know, getting all the water out when you put a stone there or a piece of broken terracotta. But you don't need to fill the whole thing up with rock. Whoever came up with that in the 70s, no, not anymore. Oh, oh yeah, so who's rock? And anybody else? Oh, yes. Yes, I do. Sure. Yeah. 
Sure. So I didn't want to take up that time. You know. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm Shannon Thompson. I'm from Rusty Fish Farm. My nursery is just outside of Albany and Tangent. And I specialize in house plants, cacti, cactus, and oddities. So odd plants. Um, yeah. And then I sell at the farmer's market on Saturday. I don't do a storefront. That's how I keep my prices low. Not yet. Not yet. I'm getting ready. Yeah. We're, we're putting up a, a little greenhouse in front and a little shed type of thing that people can come to. Yeah. Pretty exciting. Okay, do you do you do I do. So I, uh, the soil that I find in, um, what I do is I go ahead and I take uh, lava rock and I wash it back. And then I also add vermiculite, more perlite, and more coir with it in there because I put soil in the back. Um, I might still add uh, some more uh, worm casting. And yeah, I'd add some more worm casting. We'll still get plants. But the ones with the straight fire plants? Oh, wonderful. Oh, thank you. I'm going to figure out how you're through it. Oh, I can tell you about my response. I'm trying to figure it out. Beautiful. Thank you.